Hello everyone. Today we have with us Dr. H K Chopra, the chief cardiologist at Moolchand Med City, New Delhi, a cardiologist of international repute, president of CSI 2015, and chairman World Wellness Foundation, with more than 35 years of clinical experience. He has served as the editor in chief of CSI Cardiology Update 2014. STEMI update released recently, which is one of the most powerful book on STEMI in the world. He has authored more than twenty-two books and more than five sixty-four research and medical publications in many national and international journals, and he is the recipient of various national and international awards in cardiology. His pioneering contributions in the field of thrombolysis, Doppler echocardiography. and clinical and preventive cardiology is known to everyone in the world dr chopra is the organizing chairman of wcc pci 2016 and he has also organized more than 15 national and international conferences in cardiology and about 15 world congresses in cardiology i present to you dr h k chopra on the platform of doplexis today and interacting with him on stemi care in india challenges and in future in india and in the real world very good afternoon sir so to begin with what do you mean by stemi and what is the current scenario of stemi in india uh thank you very much uh, harshita i think uh, the first important question which you asked me is a very very relevant question as to what is stemi and what is the scenario of stemi in india STEMI, as we all know, is the ST elevation MI. When there is an elevation of the ST segment in the myocardial infarction, we call it the ST elevation MI. MI is a myocardial infarction. We also call it as a heart attack, and uh, we have various types of uh, ST elevation MI. Maybe anterior wall MI or inferior wall MI or lateral wall MI. Maybe multiple infarcts or can be a first MI or re MI. so this is st elevation mi is a very very important commodity in the coronary artery disease the question is what is the scenario of stemi the scenario of stemi is uh, rather very very important in indian context because india is the world capital of coronary artery disease like it is already the world capital of diabetes mellitus if you see the prevalence of uh, stemi in india is up to a tune of 3 million patients every year when i say 3 million means 30 lakhs people are added every year of stemi in india which is very alarming the real burden is 60.6% of global burden is borne by india so where are we going and what we should do in the main agenda of our discussion today now if you see the uh, overall earning of an indian per day is 1.25 dollars per day and in the future in 2030 i feel that the productivity of an indian below the age of 56 is going to be adversely affected so a time has come that there should be a massive awareness on the stemi program there should be a massive knowledge in the public at large and of course among us the general physicians physicians and specialists including cardiologist which are clinical cardiologist or non invasive cardiologist or interventional cardiologist and cardiac surgeons and the treatment should be very cost effective as harshita just mentioned that the disease is highest in indians and i have given you the data that the economical status will not allow us to go for a very costly treatment so we want a very cost effective treatment that is the major nenda which we would like to discuss so knowing the figures 
uh, I would really like to ask that what are the most common disposing factors, predisposing factors for STEMI in India? Yeah, it's a very, very important thing because why India, the STEMI is so high? In India, the STEMI is very high. The first and the foremost is hypertension. The prevalence of hypertension is up to tune of 20 to 40 percent in adults. And hypertension is a silent killer. It is usually underdiagnosed, misdiagnosed, or not diagnosed, and untreated. It is a very, very powerful predisposing factor responsible for a premature heart attack, a premature brain attack, and a premature leg attack in Indians. Number two is diabetes. As I already mentioned to you, that India is the world capital of diabetes. The diabetes make us more vulnerable to have a premature STEMI in Indians. The third important factor is also risk factor like stress, negative competition, arrogance, fear, jealousy, hatredness, cynical behavior, hostility. And of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, what we call as uh, vindictiveness, vengeance. They're all the hostility are very, very dominant factors in today's world, which produce a lot of stress and cause the rupture of the atherosclerotic plaque and the formation of a clot, which give rise to a heart attack. Smoking or tobacco in any form, whether we smoke cigarette or we smoke BD or hookah or fanny, almost same thing. Today, we chew tobacco, tomorrow tobacco will chew us. Today, we smoke a cigarette, tomorrow cigarette will smoke us. It is a cigarette or tobacco which is almost 4,000 chemicals, which makes our coronary arteries very narrowed and totally change the hemorrheology of our blood flow within the coronary arteries and make them highly vulnerable to a premature clot formation. It's very nice. I must compliment Modi's government that for the first time in India history, they have given the clearance to 85% of pectoral warnings are given on the smoking packet cigarette packets. So the same way, if we increase the awareness about the negative effects of smoking and tobacco, I'm sure we can reduce the STEMI prevalence in India to a very large extent. The next important factor is sedentary habits, lack of exercise, obesity. Obesity is a very, very powerful predisposing factors in Indians. There is a data to support that 65% of prevalence rate is of obesity in the age group of 40 to 60 in Indians and especially central obesity. Central obesity is a very powerful predictor of a premature STEMI, hypertension, diabetes and dyslipidemia. So I think cutting down to obesity is very, very important and central obesity has got a very powerful prediction power. When I say central obesity means pot belly. We also call it central obesity should not be more than 90 centimeters in men and should not be more than 80 centimeters in women, which is very, very powerful. Otherwise, the vulnerability for getting a premature STEMI is very, very high. Then we talk about the exercise. People who are sedentary habits, they don't exercise. They are highly vulnerable. So one should exercise regularly and every day, at least for about half an hour every day. Any form of exercise is good whether walking, walking, jogging, swimming, cycling or dancing, but hard, unfriendly exercises should not be advocated in the form of push-ups or weightlifting. They are not good. The last risk factor which I feel is very, very important is to know about the lipids, the blood cholesterol. The good cholesterol is usually low in Indians. It should be more than 40 in males and more than 50 in females. In Indians, it is always less. Similarly, the bad cholesterol, with total cholesterol should not be more than 130 and the LDL or low density lipoprotein should be not be more than 70 and triglycerides should not be more than 130. So these are the important risk factors so far as lipid is concerned. And besides this, there are other factors. Some have a folic acid deficiency, some have a hyperhomocysteinemia, some have a iron deficiency anemia or B12 deficiency. So they all should be taken care of and recently, there is a lot of talk on vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is also a very, very important predictor of a premature 
coronary artery disease. So these are all the factors, what we call as uh, uh, predisposing factors for um, STEMI in a younger age group of less than 40 or 50 in Indians. So this is just a brief discussion why Indians are more vulnerable to have a premature uh, STEMI as compared to his counterparts in the Western world or in Europe. So these five common factors that you mentioned, smoking, stress, hypertension, diabetes and obesity, which one do you think is the most important? The most important factor in Hashita, which I think is the uncontrolled hypertension, undiagnosed, misdiagnosed, mistreated, misevaluated diabetes and hypertension and obesity or the denominator, common predictor of a premature STEMI. So hypertension has been termed as a silent killer because it many of the times go undetected. So how can we solve that? I think uh, it's very important that we have to enhance the awareness about the hypertension. Just last year, in 2015, CSI conducted a very large national survey in 200 cities with almost 1.8 lakhs of individuals. Over a period of eight hours, we did a national survey and our data was like this. We found that 35% of patients were hypertensive and they were not knowing it. It's amazing. Prevalence rate in adult population is 35%. Number two, we found that 42% of individuals who were hypertensives were not controlled on medication. In other words, the medication given were not adequate, not effective, or the adherence was poor, or the compliance was poor. So I think we need to increase the awareness that everybody after the age of 20 should have a BP checkup should go to the doctors to have a regular medication if required, should have a weight management. They should know that weight is very, very important to give rise to high blood pressure. Recently, there is a lot of talk on what we call as ambulatory BP monitoring. Ambulatory BP monitoring is a very, very powerful tool. It is called as a glycosylated hemoglobin of BP monitoring in the world and in India. We can detect a lot of dippers, non-dippers, and those who have morning surge of hypertension. So checking your blood pressure in the office for the first time will give you just a brief idea. But when it is not there, does not mean you are hypertensive. So the best way to evaluate is to have a 24 hours of monitoring of blood pressure, which is a very simple method by ambulatory method. And it is going to detect a lot of patients which are masked hypertensives or who are hypertensives only at night or who are hypertensives only during stressful situations. So this is going to totally change the scene of uh, hypertension, which is a very common predictor and predisposing factor for the premature STEMI. Early intervention, early treatment, early detection, early evaluation will definitely reduce the morbidity and mortality, which is hypertension inflicted so far as STEMI is concerned. Then, Dr. Chopra, we would really like to know that what is the impact of this undiagnosed, untreated hypertension on the premature STEMI? I think uh, it's a very important, uh, Harshita, which you asked me, uh, when the hypertension is undetected and undiagnosed, the morbidity and the mortality is very, very high. In patients of STEMI, when they come to us, the data is very alarming. Uh, I think it's very important we see 50% of patients that die at home who have STEMI, they are not even accessible to any kind of treatment. And if you see them underlying, they have hypertension or diabetes or they are obese. So very obvious, it is the remaining 50% to whom we treat. And there also the mortality is very, very high. So if we really want to reduce the mortality and morbidity, control the blood pressure now before it is too late. Then why is STEMI considered as more severe type of myocardial infarction than non-STEMI? I think Ashita is a very, very important question you asked me, STEMI versus non-STEMI. The mortality rate of STEMI is very high, up to a tune of 9% to 10% in various studies like CREATE data. On the contrary, non-STEMI, it is one third, 30% of this 10%, so 3%. Similarly, Reinfarction rate is higher in the STEMI as compared to non-STEMI. And if you see the uh, mortality and morbidity is higher in STEMI as compared to non-STEMI, 
and even the therapeutic intervention or the time window is lower in STEMI as compared to non-STEMI. So to give you a brief idea, the STEMI has a very high morbidity and mortality as compared to non-STEMI. So this has to be considered very meticulous. Then how important do you think ECG is in the diagnosis and man management of STEMI? Yeah, I think it's very important uh, when you talk of ECG, the first and the foremost, most of the patients are not aware what are the symptoms of heart attack and sometimes even doctors commit a mistake to diagnose a patient when he gives the history. So it's very important we should have been awareness about the clinical symptomatology, a classical chest pain in the center of the heart or a burning sensation with radiation to the left arm or right arm with profuse sweating, choking, suffocation, heaviness or an extreme exhaustion feeling or a lightheadedness. If a patient has these complaints, ECG should be correlated and if you find there's the elevation of the ST segment, this is a very powerful tool. In fact, the first thing to happen in this patient of ST elevation MI is uh, changes in the enzymes, but it's not possible to have an enzyme at home. But these days some kits are available where you can do a trop eye estimation right there at home and say it's positive or negative. Sometimes it can be negative, positivity comes a little later. But ECG may give you the information in most of the patients, say about 90% if there is an ST elevation, which you can easily see on the ECG and which can help us to diagnose STEMI well in time for an appropriate therapeutic intervention. So as you mentioned, are there any, any other methods as well besides ECG to diagnose STEMI? Yes, yeah, very important as I mentioned to you, if a patient has got a, a classical clinical spectrum of a STEMI, and uh, if we do an ECG, which is rather non-contributory, then one can do a tropi, which is an enzyme, which is raised in patients of STEMI. We can do a myoglobin estimation. We can do a CPK MBV. And if there is a portable echo machine, we can simultaneously do an echo at the site of heart attack or in the ambulance or in the emergency. And if there's a wall motion abnormality or a perfusion deficit by myocardial contrast, we can easily diagnose a patient of uh, STEMI without any ambiguity. So it's very, very obvious and we have got a lot of gadgets by which we can pinpoint the STEMI on the spot of the attack. We are done with the first part of STEMI management here and we are really lo looking forward to the second part of this interview where we'll be continuously discussing the ma management of STEMI with Dr. H.K. Chopra. These interviews and events are featured by Docplexes exclusively for the doctors of Docplexus community. To receive updates regarding such upcoming events, please subscribe and like our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and follow us on Twitter. Happy Docplexing!